Hey friends, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. I'm a professional home organizer and singer here in Boston, and I love to talk about all things home and motivation and organization and decorating and all that stuff. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to build healthy habits that will last. Now, it is January when I'm filming this video, and everyone right now is thinking about their New Year's resolutions, their New Year's goals or whatever, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you are looking to make a change in your life, whether it's a behavioral change or relationships with people you have that might not be the best or that might be toxic or getting your home organized, whatever it is in your life, you don't have to wait to start. You can do this immediately. You can do this an hour from now. You can do it tomorrow. You can do it today. You can do it right now. You don't have to wait till the new year. You don't have to wait till the next school year. You don't have to wait till summer. Just do it whenever you feel like you have the impetus to change. So last year I changed completely. I changed my diet. I started to enjoy being exercising. I started to work with my fear of failure and fear of success uh, as far as my singing career, auditioning and stuff. Instead of being afraid and letting it stop me, I kind of lean into it and work with that fear in order to have it benefit me instead of hold me back. I also conquered my fear of spiders last year because I figured, hey, it, I'm going to see spiders for the rest of my life and either I can spend my entire rest of my life being terrified of of tiny animals or I can learn about them and appreciate them and I chose to learn about them and appreciate them and I'm gonna say right now I love spiders spiders are great they are great they're interesting and 99% uh, of the time they don't care about me and they're not after me I, I have been bitten by spiders like maybe a couple times just unsolicited like I was out of my own business but most of the time they don't oh, have any, they're afraid of you that you're big you're huge why would a spider care about you anyway we're gonna talk about building healthy habits and how to do it so let's get started lesson number one about building healthy habits I learned last year is to only try to build one good habit at a time. I find that it is really difficult to make a bunch of changes at once, especially if your initial, the way that you are, is kind of really cemented in there. Like if you're an adult, if you're a child, I think you have a lot more flexibility to change. But if you're an adult, you've been doing the same thing for a long time. And it's really hard for your brain to like twist and all those neurons to go in new directions. So I want you to concentrate, if you wanna make changes, to concentrate on one at a uh, time and make that your sole focus, make that your North Star for as long as it, you need to establish a habit, right? So last year I decided to completely cut out refined sugar from my diet. This was like my overarching like purpose in life. And when you focus on one thing at a time, you can concentrate on it even when other distractions are present. I like to think of my life like a video game. So in video games, you have like the main objective. If you're a Zelda fan, you know like kill Ganon is your main objective, get Ganon, to destroy Ganon. Um, but you also have all these side quests you can do. You have all these things to do that like waste your time or whatever, or maybe they're like, well, they're not wasting your time, you're, you're having fun doing them. And as long, if your main quest is to like build this healthy habit, good. You can concentrate on it. The side quests, all that other stuff you can still do, but like, it's not that important. Make your healthy habit that you're trying to build your main objective. So if you're, if your main objective is to cut sugar, it's all you can think about it. You can do, you're just like, well, do I want today a Coke or do I want some water with some lemon in it? You're gonna be like, well, I'm trying to cut refined sugar, so I'm asking, we're gonna have some water with some lemon in it. If you were trying to do like 80,000 things at once, if you're trying to like exercise and like dress better and buy less things, but all the stuff, I mean, these are all good, but if you have all of these different goals happening at once, it's kind of like you have one tennis racket, you know? And there's one tennis ball coming at your racket. If there's like, five balls coming at your racket, you really can only hit one ball. Maybe you can hit two if you're really talented, but like, just focus on the one ball. I like that metaphor. That was good. Okay, number two, the best way to establish a new habit is to couple that new habit with something else that you do all the time. That way it's attached to something and you won't forget. Let's talk about taking vitamins. I am the, I am the worst at taking any medication, any vitamin, I'm terrible um, 
and I needed, I know I need to take vitamin D3. This is good, comes from sunlight, cow's milk or whatever, but like we're all deficient in the vitamin D3. So I was like, I gotta get the vitamin D3 in. And I would forget it time after time, day after day. I'm like, darn, I forgot to take my vitamin D, man. And so I decided that vitamin D3 supplement taking was going to happen when I brushed my teeth at the beginning of the day. And if I coupled it with brushing my teeth at the beginning of the day, because this is something I do every day, I don't forget, um, that I'm never gonna forget it. And so once I tied it into doing the other thing that I just did every day with no effort, never forgot my vitamin D3 again. I'll never need to go in the sun again. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Get into sunlight at least 20 minutes, get it into your eyes, get into the sun, enjoy the sun. I mean, put sunscreen on, but enjoy the sun. So find a way to couple this new habit uh, onto an existing thing that you do. And that way it'll be easier for you to execute. Like if you really want to like write in a journal or whatever, and you are a coffee drinker, pair it with that coffee, morning coffee. Like, cause that, that also is something I started to do cause I started to get back into journaling. And by the way, journaling is a really good habit to get into. It's like so helpful to get all the stuff out of your brain and ugh, all the stuff that you're like, is mucking up your day. Just get it out in the morning. Then you're so good, so good, do it. Okay, number three, the most important thing I learned last year while trying to like make all of these life changes is that if you are going, if you're looking to replace something in your life that's harmful, like smoking, um, if, if, if you can't handle caffeine, sugar, uh, alcohol, whatever, if you're trying to remove something in your life, people that are harmful to you, you have to replace it with something else or you're not gonna succeed. Like when I stopped eating a bunch of refined sugar, I had to find something else that was sweet. Um, I know some people can quit cold turkey and they're like, we'll get the sweet taste out of your life or whatever, but I needed a little step down. And so I was like, I will just use stevia until I don't feel like I need it anymore. And I don't need the sweet taste in my life all the time. Um, but I find that it's difficult unless you replace things, especially if they're behaviors. If you're used to doing one thing and you don't want to do it anymore, you really should put something in its place that you enjoy, that fulfills you. If you cut out something out of your life that was a regular thing that you enjoyed, you have to replace it with something else that you'll enjoy. It'll be, you'll be so much more successful if you replace something rather than just eliminate because you're gonna need something to fill that empty hole and let it be something fun. Let it be a new hobby. Let it be, you know, um, writing, uh, going out with friends, watching a movie, give, teaching your dog a new trick, um, learning a new instrument, something to fill that hole because otherwise it is gonna be really hard to change. Number four is set yourself up with an accountability checker, whether this be an app, a person, um, uh, what else is an accountability checker, a class, a teacher. I am the kind of person who will not work out unless I, there's someone there to hold me accountable. And that's what I, that, that's the only way I can set myself up for success. I have done this time and time again, where I would sign up for a gym membership. I would go to the gym a couple of times and then I would be like, find excuses not to go. I'm like, oh, I don't feel like it. Or, um, oh, the weather sucks. I don't want to drive to the gym. Um, oh, I have so much work to do. I can't really like use two hours of my time to go to the, no, 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 no. I found myself doing that over and 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 over again. And the moment I signed up with a personal trainer is the moment I stopped making excuses. I would put my shoes on, got in my car and went to the gym. This sprinkles down into every other little area of your life. And you can set up your phone or an app to be an accountability checker for you, whether or not it sends you some sort of notification. I love to receive notifications from Morning Pages. That is a journaling app that I use that reminds me like, hey, do you wanna write in your journal today? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. It will reward you for doing it consistently. And that is the biggest like game changer I found with things that I have some resistance to. And new habits are ever, are things that you have resistance to because they're things you're not used to doing. So whether it's your buddy who's gonna like ask you whether or not you went to the gym or cleaned your house or organized your drawer or an app that's gonna remind you to like work out, you need to set yourself up with some sort of accountability checker, whether it's a real person 
or an app that's going to hold you accountable, um, you'll be so much more likely to do it if you know someone or something is watching. Oh my gosh, number five we've talked about already, but that is journaling. Now I realize journaling in itself is a habit, <laughs> which maybe you should start with that one, but you don't even really have to journal. You don't have to write out your whole like emotional stuff on pages every morning. I think that the most helpful way you can make this intentional for yourself is to write out your intention for the day, either the day before or the morning of the day, because that way you can set your intentions and the, you didn't just set your intentions in your brain because when stuff is up here, it can float around and then it just kind of goes some, you know, and maybe it'll come back, but like, for some reason, when you either take the pen and you write it out on a page or you type it into an app or whatever if you need to type, um, it's. I think the association is stronger if you actually pen to paper, but I know not everyone has the bandwidth for that. The moment you get it out of your head and onto a page or onto the keyboard, you set intentions for the day and you're much more likely to do the things that you intend to do. Or it, it And it also forces you to think about how you're going to use the time that day. So if your intention for that day, so let's say you're trying to establish a tidying up habit um, and you just kind of go through your day and it, it gets lost in the sauce of things. Um, you can set your intention at like this time of day, I'm gonna spend 15 minutes tidying up and it's like, it's out there now. It's out there and you can either um, meet, rise to the challenge of your own intention or you can learn from your, I guess, not doing it and what what is the barrier in place of you not doing it. And it sort of forces yourself to ask yourself some questions or like, well, why didn't I take 15 minutes to tidy up? Or like, what really was the reason? And kind of sit with it a little bit and look for ways to relieve some of those barriers, whether you feel like it has to be perfect or um, you just are a little overwhelmed by the fact that your place is a little messy um, and just kind of reduce your expectations. I know that a lot of people have a lot of big expectations around home organizing that like one session or like one weekend you're going to organize your entire house this is often not the case you might get one drawer done or like half of your closet or maybe the bathroom cabinet and be happy with that because you made a step forward uh, making a step forward is the most positive change you can make you don't have to make you don't have to like rock it to the end of the race all you need to do is take a tiny step forward. So I encourage you to set your intentions for the day and to make a tiny step at least because a tiny step is better than standing still and going, why can't I do that thing? So these are the five things I learned last year about making personal changes and building healthy habits that last. Um, however long it takes you to build a habit, I feel like that's very personal. I know that people are saying it takes like two weeks or a certain amount of time. I just think until you can do the thing that you're trying to do without effort or provocation is how long it takes you. And I feel like that may be individual. I don't know if, if any like neuroscientists are in the comments and there's like a consistent amount of time it takes humans to develop a habit, please let me know. Um, but I feel like it's very personal. So it may take you like three months to like develop a habit and you may have slip ups along the way where like you're not consistent and that is totally okay. Everyone is allowed to have slip ups and make mistakes. It's part of the joy and the adventure of humanity. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one.